Uh, here we go. Okay. Have you managed to have a look at your app at the updated version of it? No, I haven't, to tell you the truth. Absolutely fine. We're going to play with that now. I can do that now. So download it from the app store. Yep, so you want to download the Shea Virtual Health Assistant. Yep. <clears throat> then you'll log in with your email and your password. Well, that's weird. Hang on a minute, I just want to check something. It sort of just went straight into it rather than, oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So dashboard. Oh, it's already saying hello, Pauline. Yep. Because you already created, I don't know how or what you did to create your other profile, but as long as you weren't charged, we're good, but we've put in the new token. So you now have from yesterday's date, 12 months of access to the Shea Virtual Health Assistant. Oh, awesome. Mm. So that's the, the big benefit about this package is you've got that much time to really go through this. And if later on down the track you decide you want to renew that, you just reach out to me and I'll be able to set you up with another one. Cool. So were you able to re-enter my details though? Yep. Everything's been updated. So oh, this is... Can you see me or have I gone? No. Can you see my screen that shows you the Shea Wellness app? Oh, you've done that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, in okay. your, I'm signed okay. in as you in your app. So, okay, I'm in. Awesome. So yeah. as you can see, there's a lot of different sections here. So you've got your food section, your fitness, your recipes, your meal plan, a lifestyle tracking, updating, and oh, update measures is not on the phone app. Um, and you'll see there's a bunch of other awesome tools there. So, yeah. The main thing, and I'm going to share with you this document up here, which I'm going to send you in the group chat with um, Emma. I'm actually also recording this so Emma can watch this through so she can get a greater understanding of the complexity and, and the really the great integrations we're going to understand within this program. Okay, yeah. So what we have is me as a coach, um, I have access to the coaching panel, the back-end version of everything that you see in the app. Um, and I get privy to understanding which specific number you are. Oh, I see. Okay. So, because on this wheel, you can see here, everyone fits somewhere on this wheel. Uh -huh. Okay. And as a coach, when I know what your number is, I know where you are on that wheel, which will show me immediately because I've done so many thousands of bodies and so many case studies and whatnot. I generally can quickly understand the, and I can usually guess, I, I guess you'd be around the 280 to 295, um, yeah. <laughs> which is what we call, you'll love this. This is what we call the Diplo Diva range. I <laughs> love that. <laughs> <laughs> or so, it could be Dippy Diva. <laughs> Dippy Diva. We love that. That's so what Russell would say. <laughs> <laughs> Some days. <laughs> Some days. Well, it just depends which side of the bed you get out of. That's right. <laughs> so with yours, you're a 280. So you sit just here inside the 270. Oops. Yep. And which means that generally... As you lose or gain weight, you will shift around the wheel. And what that can actually mean, why the weight changes it is because of the shape of the phenotype will dictate, the phenotype is your body, will mm -hmm. dictate some of your emotional receptivity and responsive responses um, in relation to how much weight you hold. Because ultimately, as a female... Oh we are very connected to how our body looks and feels. And yeah. so the outputs on the profile will shift and change as your weight shifts and changes. And also mm -hmm. from here, you will always be a diplomat. The measurements that I put in compared to what you had in, there were some big variations, but the dominant source, the reason why we measure those specific parts on the body is they go into an algorithm that calculates them compared to the different locations. So we're actually each of these measurement points is us measuring your bone structure. So not your body as in fat tissue and all of that. We're measuring your bone density, your bone structure and your bone length. That's what I love about it. Mm. When I was reading about it. Mm. Exactly. And we don't need to invade you in any other way, apart from just asking a bunch of questions and getting a bunch of measurements. 
So with a diplomat, as you'll know, or as you may know, there are six different areas of our life that will have a balanced or a non-balanced effect. So if one of these aspects of our life, most people know about emotional intelligence, general intelligence, heart, you know, all these sorts of things, but it's actually a lot more complex than that. And these six areas is our mind, our social profile, our food profile, our exercise profile, our genius profile, and our place or environmental profile. Uh-huh. And these elements of our life, you've, have you ever done the, the wheel of life exercise? Yes. Yeah. So this is like the wheel of I, life exercise. I was exercise. a counsellor and then I was a coach. So. <laughs> Perfect. So I know all the about wheel the wheel of life. life. Perfect. So you would see, so this is like the PH360 version of the wheel of life. Right. But it also goes one step further because every single priority, so each of these six groups, these six specific priorities will be in a different order and for a different reason. Ah. Okay. So for a diplomat, our absolute top priority is our environment, our home environment. Yes, that's so true. How do we feel when we come into this? How do we feel when... um, You know, so uh, I do in a, in a training and I'm, I'm contemplating, I may actually open up my online group to you guys. I'm, I'm still, I have a chat with Emma and that about that, but um, there's this thing I do called an intrusion meditation and it sounds pretty full on, but it's not. All it is is really doing a meditation and dropping into a space of coming into your home and feeling into the energy you hold in each space of your home. So if I was to walk into your house right now and walk into your office, how would you feel about me seeing your office? Is it clean? Is it tidy? Is things put away? Is things in their spots? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel uh, any, any emotions or heaviness? Then we would go through each room in the house. We'd go into your kitchen cupboard. We'd go into your fridge. We'd go into your freezer and wow. get you to drop into the space of the energy held within that space. Um, I may do this as a group for you guys. That's um, so also. interesting. Mm. Because as a diplomat or a guardian, that energy you hold when you walk into your home thinking about those spaces is something that affects you day in, day out. It's like that dress that you always wanted to fit in, yet every time you pick it up, you feel anxious and not good enough or judgmental upon yourself. Yeah. These are the items and the things that need to be done or thrown away to remove that energy that is directly bombarding you day in, day out without you even meaning it for it to. You might not even be aware of it. No, I'm only, I'm only aware. That's so fascinating, Shana, because I'm a very, I have to have everything uh, clear and organised, right? And when you say that, I've been saying to Russell the last couple of weeks, oh, I'm not feeling right anymore. I've got to, you know, start cleaning out again, like cupboards and things. Yep. So the hmm. diplomats and the guardians, have you heard of the, the term procrastinate baking? No. <laughs> Diplomats and guardians are terrible when we are procrastinating. So if we take on too many things at once, yes. we're trying to split ourselves amongst everything. Our often tactile um, choice of movement will be to go clean something or cook something because it helps us feel or eat something because it helps yes. us feel yes. better. And it's a direct procrastination because we've allowed too much to be bombarding us and we're not getting the opportunity to create clarity. Diplomats are the ones that need to have the entire objective, but the objective needs to be then broken down into bite-sized chunks and a linear process to not understand what amount of energy needs to go into each component to get to the end result so that they understand. Because ultimately, um, if we look at the different phenotypes here, Each of them have, um, each of these phenotypes are created by understanding which was the more dominant um, germ or the most dominant layer of the embryo when you were created. And that was dependent upon your mother's um, environment at that point in time for gestation. So as you're creating in the womb, depending on your mother's environment will depend on whether or not your ectoderm grows more, which your ectoderm is the nervous system, it is the brain, it is the skin. Wow. Mesoderm is the, the muscles, the bones, the ligaments, also the, um, the, the, uh, all your 
reproductive organs, all of those yeah. hormones that go with it. So their main, main driver is um, dop- uh, adrenaline. Um, and then we come across the guardians and the diplomats, which are the endomorphs. And our main layer that was dominant was the endoderm. And the endoderm is lungs, digestive system, and thyroid, pharynx, and all these sorts of sections of the body. So the strength of these parts of each of these different germ types or phenotypes can also become their weakness. <clears throat> so as a reference, directly across the wheel from a diplomat is an activator. So the activators are muscle-driven, high testosterone, love challenge, variety, chaos. They do well in chaos. But the diplomat there, we are the ones that need, we need time and space to figure it out. Our gut is our strongest ally, yet is oh. the easiest part of our body to be upset um, and to be reactive. Yes. And what happens in the gut? Do you know what hormone is created most sensitively in the gut? Uh, cortisol. Cortisol, yes. That's, that's one of our killers. But um, the main one is serotonin. So serotonin comes from the gut. And because endomorphs, so if you look at this side of the wheel here where the endo, the guardian, the diplomat is, our word is feel. Yes. The activator and the connector, the mesomorph, is do. Right? And then yep. the ectomorph, the, the ectomorph, which is the crusade and the sensor, they are think. Ah. So if a diplomat or guardian is feeling too much or feeling and not being present and feeling not being aware, we can get into emotional eating. We can get into all kinds of cat- catastrophic behaviors as a way of suppressing the feeling because we feel a lot. Yes. 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 yes an awful lot. Yes. So then it's about understanding um, when someone gives us something um, and it's taking away our time or our space, we're quite reactive to that. And yeah. if you don't understand, right? Is that right? Does that feel right? It's like, Russell, when are you going to Christchurch again? Because I really need some time by myself. <laughs> and they'll go, oh, you know. <laughs> he gets Oh, upset. my God. I think I've got to get better again. with that one. <laughs> Well, we need to become more diplomatic. But guardian, I think he's a guardian. From looking at him, he looks like a guardian towards a connector, which is a good match. But the thing is, is that a diplomat, (laughs) our serotonin, so activators thrive on adrenaline and they burn through serotonin. They produce serotonin very quickly. That's why they're so happy-go-lucky. Guardians and diplomats don't. We're very limited in the amount of serotonin that we have. It's our precious commodity. It's our, our greatest resource. Because totally. I've, I've suffered from clinical depression since I was uh, a late 20, uh, sorry, late teens. Mm-hmm. And I'm only just now at 57 coming right off my meds. Mm. That's, and that's why that's taken years and years of self-management. But do you know this is the first time I have ever heard that serotonin is made in the gut? There you go. I worked in mental health. I worked, I've, I've had jobs in mental health. I've had my own experience of mental illness, blah, blah, blah. And no and one told me it was gut related. I've never, ever heard that it come from the gut. Well, it depends. This, well, this it, is come, it, it is in the gut as well. Yeah. This is the greatness of what we're doing here. This is where we want to take this because it depends on where you are on that wheel as to what your state of depression would be most likely related to. Right? Uh-huh. Because everyone's grown, everyone runs on different hormones, different priorities, different requirements for input and output. So in saying that, with, with diplomats being about time and space, if we don't know how much time and space something is going to take, we don't know if we're going to succeed at the task. Therefore, our vital minuscule source of serotonin is in threat because we don't know if we have enough to do the task. So diplomats hate to fail. Anyone, anything. Oh, my God. Do you know, like, I'm always anxious about time. As in not showing up in that, because I'll be there, boom, boom, boom. Mm-hmm. I feel I run out of time and that makes me anxious. Like, There's because I've got too much going on. And I was just saying to Ryan today in our, in our um, session, um, one of my aims is to, to get rid of that anxiety yep. around time. 
my goal is to give you a big spread everywhere. Like, yep. I've got so many ideas and so much stuff going on in my head. Yep. Okay, so that's perfect. So what we then need to look at is understanding that this is a is a natural thing for you and then becoming aware of it. So Yeah, that's the, fascinating. The biggest thing for diplomats, there's a couple, couple points that are like the key bang for buck, which I will send out in this document. Time and space. So we naturally need to have a home environment, office, and other environments that are in flow, that are clear of clutter, space, and make you feel less cramped in your physical space because that will naturally affect your mind. Planning your day, your week, and your month are essential. Mm. Okay? It's very important that you align with your work I'll show you. Sorry, I'll show you. I'm a diary person, right? Mm -hmm. um, and a journal person. I bought this beautiful, can you see that? Where, yes. Where can, yep. Beautiful journal. No, uh, sorry, diary this year. Mm -hmm. And it's driving me crazy because this is what it looks like on the inside. Oh. And then it's got, uh, you know, it's got lovely things in it, but this. Um, like you'll turn a page and it's got all this. Oh, anyway, it's, it's just got all this stuff in it. Yeah. And, it, and it's so like that. Yeah. You know, which is beautiful, but it drives me, me nuts because I, um, I usually just have a normal diary and I put everything down and I can see it clearly when I open it up. Yep. But that one's asking me to do things too. Yeah, it's probably probably taking it's probably demanding more of your time than what you were anticipating giving to a diary. Does yes. that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yes. So it's it's super like have you noticed that you jump from job to job or career to career quite easily? Yes. All mm -hmm. my life. Diplomats. All my life. We are because we want to be a part of the herd. So the, the other key words of a diplomat is we diplomats need to be heard. And they also need to be a part of the herd. Ah, oh, okay. So we love to be included. When I'm talking to a diplomat, you must always give them the credit of what they're saying and hear them properly. If a diplomat gets interrupted, <laughs> yes, it's that's not true. heard. Yeah, yeah. And it's very stressful for us. But your, yeah. your biggest thing is that an understanding of your big direction and where you're going, like the Titanic. The Titanic is a diplomat. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So right. The, the Titanic, before it leaves the shore, it knows the people, the activities, it knows where it's going, it knows the expected trajectory, it knows the current wind, it knows the like it knows everything before it leaves for its journey. Totally. Yep. And if diplomats don't know what the entire mission is going to take, it will stress them. And this is where we live in cortisol response. This is where we live in stress and anxiety and depression. But well, that just explained my business, you know, like which is going nowhere because, um, you know, just like the Titanic, I hear what you're saying because I know what I wanted to do and then all these things come in at me and I, and I get all these lovely creative ideas and, you do know, you have and it, a whiteboard? Sorry? Do you have a whiteboard? I used to before I had to move into the office. Not I would office. suggest getting yourself one because those thoughts and ideas will always happen. Diplomats are very creative, but we can very easily get ourselves distracted by the multitude yeah. of little things rather that, than focusing on the main priority. Yeah, yeah, totally. So you need a spot that you can, you can, even if you have like a notepad in your bag when you're out and about and you can jot down all the thoughts in the notes and then when you get home, make it a nighttime ritual thing to go to your whiteboard and throw your mind onto the whiteboard so it's out of your thoughts. Ah. Yep. Yep. And then just understanding that it's very... Uh, Making sure that we understand your, your main goal and all these other things are great ideas, but you always have to be conscious of the energy it's going to require you to add those things into your day or your week or your month. And are yeah. they truly necessary? Diplomats are the ones that go through life and every month or three months, they have to do a declutter physically, mentally, and emotionally. Yes. Because yes. you just bring stuff along. <laughs> 
And then I just freeze mm -hmm. as in, oh, like I, I'll do everything and I'll be there, 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 there. I'm very active. And then, but I haven't, at the end of the year, I haven't accomplished anything. We're great at being busy at being busy. Yes. That's what I'm trying to change. Great. So the whiteboard, mud mapping, and just, just getting the brain out and then having a plan. So it's very important. So I'll flick between two pages here. So if we go in here and we go into lifestyle, this shows us, these are the core, these wheels are what we call the chronobiology wheel of you. So there is a clock that we run our time by. Then we have the sun that goes up and down. So our body understands, oops, sun up, oops, sun down. Um, Currently, your wake-up time that I saw you jot down, perfect. Your bedtime, perfect. We're going to talk about food just before we finish up this session. But what I want you to understand is that as a person who runs your own business, these chronobiology wheels of lifestyle are what no one ever taught us before, right? Yeah, totally. So a good objective for you would be to go through each of the tabs and print out, grab a screen grab of each of the wheels and grab the view detailed schedule. This view detailed schedule for each of the wheels will show you a little more detail of what actually is best for you in those timeframes. Yeah. Okay. Now for you, avoiding stress in the morning until 11 a.m. is paramount. Planning between 11 and 1 is when you're going to have your groove for the day. So it's like sitting and you're with Ryan and, and, and Emma. So being in your feminine in the morning and being flowy and really working on you oh. and focusing on your energy and your balance and what you want to do is going to have you in your natural state of flow. Right. And once you've filled your cup in the morning, it's then coming in and planning your day, your week, whatever it might be between 11 and one. Now this doesn't work for everyone. And I do have quite a few clients that we have to, bargain with their <laughs> lifestyle yep the other one is between one and three it says breathe that says this, what breathe so oh, yeah getting outside and bringing some oxygen into your lungs blood circulation this is really really critical for your health if you are inside or outside and you, you basically what i say to people is between one and three set an alarm on your phone each half an hour saying breathe and just make sure you take a couple of conscious um, diaphragmatic breaths yep. deep into the lungs and you'll notice that will it just enable you to have a greater state of calm and that will help your mind, your everything, your digestion, you name it. Yep. Then, you know, it says between three and six is when you're best to be doing your exercise. Mm. <laughs> have you been exercising morning or afternoon? Not, not at all, really. No. Oh, so a little afternoon walk just to finish out your day, maybe. So, like, it's something I need to find to get back into mm. because the last three months I haven't done much at all. Mm -hmm. mm. So you're feeling a bit agitated and aggressive at the moment? Uh, uh, I'm feeling... Um, I'm feeling I'm let myself down and my Very body's always aches so much more with the arthritis. I've got arthritis in the bottom of my spine, aging arthritis, mm -hmm. osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. And that's always so much worse when I don't exercise. Yeah. So the cool thing is, is if you want to, you could start setting your alarm and there's actually a section in here under fitness, which will show you your, again, another chronobiological wheel. And that wheel will show you the best times to be doing what in your day. So you can click on the view detailed schedule and print that one out and have a look. But the really cool thing that you should really enjoy is that there is actually programs in here. So strength, cardio and flexibility that are specifically designed for your body. So you could do these ones You go, you know what, I'm going to get into the gym in at home and I'm going to do a low intensity beginner level with portable equipment from home on the mm -hmm. full body three days a week or two days a week. And then you can go through and you can create your own exercise routine through the most highly recommended um, programs here. So this one says a squat, which is a lunge. Um, 
then a, a squat where it's got you pushing a, a band around your knees. So you're pushing, you can view the exercise. Each one of them has a video um, and a variation. So you go through and do this workout oh. three times. That would be actually, that would be okay for me because I've got all the bits. I've got the, I've got the band and I've got little, little dumbbells. dumbbells. I just don't ever use them. <laughs> Yay! So let's look at that. So for a diplomat, it's important. How many days a week would you like to start doing this? And how long would you like to do it for? Plan it out. How does your week look? What day would you do it? And how long would you do it for? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Are you asking me now? Yeah. You better. Uh, two, uh, two days a week? Yep. What days? Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. What time? Uh, what's my optimal time? Three, between three and six, is it? Yep. Yep. Uh, five. For how long? Uh, what would be a good starting Starting point, I would say start off with 20, 25. See, diplomats, we're actually great at training for longer. But the cool thing for you would be is whether or not you could do a full hour and just do 20 minutes of, of the weight session. So just two rounds through, two to three rounds through, and then go walking for the rest of it. Would that be achievable? Yeah, that, that would be good. Two to three rounds of workout. And the rest walking. Okay. How does that feel for you? And then maybe the other days of the week, maybe there's another day on the weekend you could go outside and go hiking or is there like a bushwalk you've been wanting to do or some swimming? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to go um, bushwalking with Russell. Each weekend? Every weekend, yeah. And how long do you normally go for? Oh, I'd, I'd want like a good hour, hour and a half. One. I'd say an hour. Anyway, at the moment, <clears throat> we're both really unfit at the moment. Oh, a good starting point together then. Yeah, well, he wants to get back into it as well, so. Brilliant. So then what, let's, let's, let's be objective here, what are the things that would get in the way of you doing that and committing to it? Talking myself out of it. Like, uh, yeah, and getting distracted because there's too much other things going on or? Yep. Anything else? Not really. No. <laughs> there's no excuses. I, I've got, I have time and I have to put myself first. Exactly. Filling our own cup gives us the greater ability to do more. Yeah, I'm doing it the wrong way round. I've been doing it the wrong way round. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I've been trying to do business and organise business and all that, you know. <clears throat> so what do you think is some things that you could put in place? What are some, knowing that you could talk yourself out of it and get distracted, what are some things you could put in place to counteract that? I like the idea of um, setting an alarm for it. Uh, I could set up, Set up the garage, like as in, um, because I've got my computer right here and I've made a nice studio space on the uh, one side of the garage, so it's very pleasant to work in. But I also, I'm just realising I've got carpet on the floor down here just behind me. Mm -hmm. So I could just have my equipment nearby, just pick it up and get going, like when the alarm goes off. Perfect. Perfect. Stop, drop, and roll. So what would you need to do then? You would need, is there some things you would need to do to be able to stop, drop, and roll in that? Uh, sorry, what, how do you mean? <laughs> sorry. Um, so knowing that you would be training at that five o'clock time, is yeah. there a thing that you should do prior to this training time to ensure that you can put your tools down and go and train? No. 
Would you need to have the same clothes on? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. So if you're having lunch between two and four, then maybe whilst you're having lunch, you could get changed. Oh, that's a good idea. Yep. Yeah. Get cha uh, changed during lunch. Yeah. And make sure you have a water bottle filled up maybe. Yes. Yeah. Anything else? Tell? No, I'll be good to go, I think. Excellent. And maybe discussion with your husband to let him know your plans and see if he's wanting to jump in and support you or just simply stand there and support you from the sidelines? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, to, to not uh, <laughs> talk me out of it or like, yeah. Just yeah, to, to have his support to keep you on accountable. Yes, yes. So maybe is there another um, goal that we... Actually, let's go back from... Okay, so that's our fitness sort of. Do we feel connected, motivated, and understanding what we're wanting and committing to? I feel connected and, and understand it. The motivation's lacking, but I'll, I will get there. You will get there. We're only starting out with baby steps. Yeah. So I'll write that two to three rounds. That's right, it's 20 minutes. So what I'm doing in doing this process with you is I'm allowing you to create the space in your mind first. Yes. Okay. Do you have fitness shoes and fitness clothing you can wear? Yes, yeah. Great, so we don't need to go shopping. Oh, I'm one of those people that is so organised. I've got everything and then mm. don't reach my goal. <clears throat> so... It's just about breaking it down into the baby steps and finding the fun and the play in it. Maybe during your lunch, you could play some uplifting music so you're feeling more alive. Yes. Music at lunch to get in the groove. Okay. So then if you come across, so... What I would love is for you to have a read through your environment. So if you go into lifestyle and go to place, yeah. because place is your highest priority, it's understanding how you respond and react in your environment that can be very, very important. So you can do well in the city, but your best surroundings are having natural qualities and yeah. shouldn't be noisy. Nope. Nope. Is everything in your house feel like it's got a pretty natural quality or is there some areas in the house that maybe feel a bit industrial still? Uh, it's pretty good, actually. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Then the next one, so that's a good one to be aware of, is you, if you're coming home and feeling stressed, um, maybe the house has been closed up and it feels stuffy and feels kind of claustrophobic. So looking at your environment immediately will impact you. Like I know that when I wake up here in my sister's and love her to pieces, but she's got five children. So <gasps> quite often a very full kitchen of junk and rubbish and things. So yes. the first thing I do when I wake up and generally when I go to bed is I make sure I've cleaned her kitchen. Because for me, I know that it stresses me out if yes. I walk in and see all that mess. So yes. I take assertive measures to go, I get that she's busy, exhausted with a newborn baby oh. or other children. So I'm just going to help her out, which inevitably helps me out. Yeah. Okay. So taking full responsibility for where that sits for me. Um, then um, here's the next one. So I may prefer quiet environments and relaxed evenings where I can take a break and avoid engaging in anything stressful. Um, moments to be able to collect your thoughts and your own things will be important to you. So setting up a nightly ritual where you can slow down and relax with some like, activities alone in your thoughts can be very, very good and balancing. Creating an area in your home can actually really, really be a good opportunity to give you that space of like, when I'm in this space, I'm in my downward spiral to wind down and maybe collect my thoughts and do my journaling or my, my organizing for the next day. I like so it. Have a read through these. I'd love for you to do that. And it'll even show you in here. This is what I love about this section places to avoid. So places that may give my body stress are, and are better to be avoiding is, 
um, that your, your immune system will be naturally lower during October and November. You may notice that you get rather ill through in those months. Mm. During this time, avoid public transport and overtaxing your body, visiting places where you may be exposed to other illnesses. Eat foods that boost your immune system and during this time. So this is just saying during this time, please look after yourself and generally look at your year ahead. And because diplomats plan quite well, I generally set an alarm towards the end of the month prior, just from all, you know, during the year and going, just remember, you know, in January when you're getting ready for work or you're planning things, put in your, in your calendar a different colour for those months. You know, reminding yourself that this is a nurturing month so you don't book too much in, so you don't make sure you don't expect too much of yourself. I like that. So the other one, being in New Zealand, you're quite fortunate. Here I am in South Australia. This is a good instance for you. I'm living, in, I'm staying in South Australia with my family. And when I lived here, I was a teenager. So I thought that I was just a hormonal, emotional teenager. But it wasn't until I moved to Queensland and got into all of this, I understood that actually, because I'm the same as you, I'm sensitive to naturally or artificially dry climates. Um, places that use excessive air conditioning and heating can actually produce um, uh, heat with a positive iron and low resilient moisture may cause an irritation in my respiratory system. So my lungs. Um, so... Uh, a dry cough, any respiratory disorders, nasal congestions and headaches um, can be a sign that you're actually living in an environment that's too dry or artificially created. So yeah. things like um, salt lamps, um, humidifiers um, and things like that can be really, really important to keep your lungs and your airways clear. So, so how do the salt lamps work? I've they, seen them. Yeah, so they create ions in the air, which are really, really wonderful for diplomats. And naturally, if you walk into a room with one of those salt lamps on, you're just naturally going to feel better. Ah, yeah. I know, like, I'm a person that, I'm a window open person. Mm -hmm. Do have the windows open. Good. Like fresh air, like I always have to have the fresh air coming through. Mm-hmm. Mm. Which is really, it's important for a diplomat. Sometimes you can sit there and be like, why am I agitated? And then look around and go, oh, there's stuff everywhere and the windows are closed and I just want everything to be sorted out. Diplomats are the ones that I quite, there's three health types that I quite often will say, why don't you get yourself a cleaner? Uh, <laughs> you know, because it's one of those things you just get naturally annoyed at the mess and the chaos. So if oh, I do. I do. And I'll go, oh, my God, this place is a mess. And Russell will say, it isn't, hun. It really isn't. It is. <laughs> but it, it isn't to him. And mm. we keep a really, like, tidy, clean house. And there's different levels of that to me. And I'm yes. not super obsessive, but I'm, I know exactly what you're saying. Mm. 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 And then when you're doing a business and all that, I start getting overwhelmed because it's not to, up to my standard. Mm. Very, very common for diplomats. So uh, cleaner is a good idea, just to keep on top of it. Yeah, so just explaining to Russell, because I think Russell's more of a guardian, so guardians like to have more. They have, then do, whereas diplomats, um, so they have, feel, and then do, whereas diplomats feel, then have, then do. Yeah, that makes sense. And I was quite stressful to him when we first got together, living together, because... I was always clear, clearing out and cleaning out and, mm. you know, and I'd go, look, are you going to get rid of those books? And, you know, you've got three boxes of magazine, car magazines. Are you going to get rid of them? And he'd get really, like, uptight. And, and then I'd think, oh, my God, Paulie, they're his things. Don't, don't do that. And I'd wonder why that would irritate me so much. Mm. But, yeah, he is a bit of a – he's not a hoarder or, or a collector even, but he's just got his precious – like a whole bookshelf of books in yeah. the garage. Yeah. Which that can, sort of thing. Just generally, if a guardian is hoarding, and not hoarding, I'm, I'm going to use that term lightly. If a guardian is hoarding, he doesn't feel safe. There's some mm. element or someone in his vicinity that doesn't feel safe. And that ah. might be that they don't feel safe towards him, but it may also be that he doesn't feel like that a child or someone like that isn't feeling safe. So then we have a conversation about understanding whether or not they are existing inside their own um, 
uh, what's the word? Um, uh, conscious circle. So it's, it's, it's like we can be in, in three different types of business. We can be in the environment's business. So I'd want to do this on Saturday, but it might rain. So I might not do that. The environmental business. We have no, no opportunity to change that. The, the environment's going to be what it is. And you just need to learn to obviously go with the flow. Then there's people that sit there in everybody else's business. And they're too busy worrying about everyone else around them being affected by everyone else. And that means if you're sitting in someone else's business, you're not sitting inside your business. No one's yes. running your show. Yes. So with a lot of guardians, we have to have this conversation of going as much as you care about the people around you. If you don't balance your own equilibrium and create boundaries and conversations around keeping yourself and your energy within you, you will then require food and things to help you feel heavy and help you feel safe because the guardian body feels safest when it's heaviest. Hence why. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So if they're stressed, they will hold excess weight. Then yes, he does. Past a bakery and put on four kilos. Yeah. Right? Also, he spends a lot of time worrying about me, even when there's nothing to worry about. But like, you're right, hun. Oh, do you want? cup of tea no i just want to be left alone to do my work oh mm. you know yeah mm. so then it's also i mean this is probably more in emma and that's jurisdiction but it's something that i also am very strong about is then also understanding the masculine and the feminine yes yeah, yeah. Women yeah. Are very terrible for sitting in their masculine way too much who's that sorry diplomat women ah yes i oh, know yeah. what well, we are talking about that at the moment in my sessions Good. Because I want to I want to step back into my feminine sexuality and sensuality more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was a single mum years ago, four four kids. So I got a I a very strong masculine. Yep. Yeah. And and I noticed with Russell I automatically just take that role. And we've talked about that. We are very good talkers to each other mm -hmm. and um and i've got a wee way to go in that because what it does is take away his ability he said it he said i it takes away what did he say it takes away my faith in myself or something that mm -hmm. oh no that you've got no faith in me and i said but i have i've got huge faith in you i wouldn't be and he said but you don't act like that yeah, so we have to provide space for the man to rise because honestly, most women we oh, go. I like that. If I, don't do it, if I don't do it, you won't do it. But you yes. don't have to allow the man the time. It's like when we have a child. If we do everything for the child, the child will never learn the functional program and the progress and the steps to achieving these things. And the man, it's not downgrading the man. It's just saying the man is requiring you to step off your high horse yes. and give the opportunity. <laughs> I am a Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> On top of everything else. <laughs> On top of everything else. But yeah, so it's really about going, okay, so sometimes I need to let go of the reins and give him the opportunity to portray and show me his masculine king, his energy of being able to provide for me because that's going to stress him out because if you're not giving him the opportunity to to nurture you and love you which is his natural genius his natural talent is nurturing yeah so and that was say, very hard for me to get used to yeah so when you say no i don't want to drink and no i don't want a coffee he's going oh there's nothing i can do for you right now yes Whereas if you were just to say that's lovely you know what yeah, well, have a glass of water. Give him something to provide for you. He feels like he's been benefiting you and he has a place beside you. Yeah. In My other question is, is if your office is in the house, do you then go from your office and directly interact with him for dinner and everything? Well, his office is in the house too. This is what's changed at the end of the year. He moved his office from Christchurch down to the house so now that now we're both working at home so creating a ritual when you guys go tools down end of the day hey honey tools down end of the day something like going and having a shower together to ah. wash your work environment and step into your relationship in your correct energy wow that's awesome right it's, it's a huge it's a beautiful like you guys doing the measurements together yesterday 
was perfect. It warms my heart. Oh, look, we're, we're peas in a pod. Like, you are. We're so, so lucky to have found each other. So beautiful. You've got such a good energy together. But for you, you're much like me, and we have to be careful we don't castrate the man before he's even yes. had an Yes. <laughs> I've got it, that. Mm, mm. So it's our expectation that we have to measure. It's our expectation that we have to keep checking in with. Yes, totally. Um, what am I writing here? Uh, goal. So another goal. One point. I really love that, Shana. I'm going to do that, and I know he'll be totally open to that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to call it a tools down. To do a tool, yeah, down. that's what I wrote. Tools down ritual, yeah. a tools down uh, ritual. It to you, yeah, or you both at the end of day. Uh, your next one would be watch your expectation, yes, of others. Oh. Allow them to learn and provide their relevance. No castrating. How does that sound? Right there. No castrating, because that's what I do. <laughs> All the kids are coming home now. Okay, so that's okay. Food. That's food. That's um. Sorry, fitness. Yes. We've got stepping into the masculine and the feminine, which is off topic from PH360, but it's also something I'm very, very, it's, it's your environment. It actually is. And it relates to health and eating and drinking yes. alcohol. Yes, hmm. indeed. The other one, um, <laughs> while we Bobby. Oh, tired teddy bear. The other one is um, your ideal vacation. So if you're going to go on a holiday together, have you ever been on a holiday and come home feeling worn out? Yep. Yeah. So there are actually certain environments, certain places, certain locations, certain times of the year in which your DNA will best recuperate in certain environments. So in this app, you can actually have a look here in your ideal vacation and your best time to rejuvenate. So your best time to rejuvenate is the four fourth week of September. And what I would normally do is set an alarm for myself and schedule it in at the beginning of the year. I need to budget and I need to find the things that I want to do in that week. And I'm not allowing myself to book in any work, but I guarantee you the last two years I've managed to totally stuff myself over in that week or the week leading up to it. And oh. I remember I've had two catering events two years in a row and I've gone, <gasps> this is meant to be my rejuvenation week. And here I am exhausting myself. And I've ended up ill every time. Wow. What's that about? <laughs> well, it's, just, it's the time of the year where your DNA is wanting to recover itself. So, I'm wondering if I've got these headphones and if it might make sense. <laughs> so, is that clearer? <laughs> Is that clear? Is that clearer for you? I was okay anyway. It was? Okay. Yeah. Um, the ideal vacation here is you might prefer cool temperatures with light winds um, and humid weather, such as forested areas and natural reserves. Um, you want to avoid dry conditions, so don't come to South Australia, but your ideal location would be New South Wales and Brisbane and things like that, which yeah. are really beautiful. We love Noosa. Oh, even better. Or oh, Noosa can get a bit humid, but not too bad, depending on what time of the year you go. September is still a pretty good temperature in Noosa. We liked Fiji, but that was really hot, and Russell got sick in Fiji. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see that there is this will help you to understand the sort of places that are beneficial when you're planning a holiday. Mm -hmm. Also inside the app, uh, actually, no, before we go to the app, let's go back here. So, we've done environment. You're also seeing here I have these little pictures that helps you understanding your food timeframes and your exercise timeframes and understanding the energy. So, 
you, you stated in your questionnaire that you're pretty sluggish and slow in the mornings. You got yep. a pretty good during the day and then you might drop off. But you're awake at the right time because you wake up about 7 or 8, don't you? Yep. Perfect. And a diplomat breakfast time is between 8 and 11, if you even feel like breakfast at all. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I, do, I, I don't often feel like breakfast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good, then don't worry about it. Honestly, it's not a big deal for you. Lunch? I operate um, I operate um, better when I don't have breakfast. Good, then don't bother with it. My energy is better. Good. We're, diplomats are the ones that were designed. You know how everyone talks about the fasting diets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best for diplomats to do that. Yeah. So your lunch would be between two and four, and this is when you want to have your biggest meal with the most veggies, carbs, fats, proteins. And if you have a big enough lunch, then dinner time you should also not really feel like eating. I know plenty of diplomats that live on one meal a day. Wow. That, actually, Guardians. that doesn't surprise me. Mm. I could easily live on one meal a day, I reckon. Mm. It's just making sure that you have... So you and your husband would both benefit from having smaller, lighter dinners? Yeah, totally. Your proteins and your carbs at your lunchtime and dinner time being dominantly vegetarian. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Um, later training, time and space. So really owning your schedule. So we've spoken about that, decluttering your space. I'm going to give you these documents to take home. Um, so looking at these numbers again, your six priorities. So we've talked, spoken extensively about environment. I think you kind of understand that your, your genius, as in what you want to be doing, your motivation, your purpose in life, is actually your second priority. It's the second thing that will affect you most. So you've gone place and your, your, what you're doing in the world, your purpose and your passion. Yeah, it drives me mad when I don't know it. Yeah. So spending your diplomats are constantly searching. Yeah, yeah we I are. Spent, I spent, I left school, became a hairdresser, uh, a um, chef. I quit chefing and I did chased money and I went into harvesting jobs. I quit that and I got into bartending and mining. I went from mining into um, personal training, personal training into network marketing, network marketing into genetics, you know, so, yep. <laughs> and you're constantly trying to chase that feeling of contentment, of purpose, of passion, of drive. And you put everything, well, I, and when I find a purpose, I, I put everything a lot into it. Into it. Yeah. But honestly, you'll generally get to a point and going back to the serotonin levels, you go into an idea because you find that there's generally a herd mentality in it that you're attracted yes. to. Yep. And then you will get to a point where you're going to feel like the energy you're putting in is not going to create the energy out that you were anticipating. Yes. And quite often you will quit or leave, which will be very hard because you're leaving the herd. Yes. Quit and leave because you realize you're not going to receive what you intended. So you're finding the next thing that can help you feel like you're going to regain that serotonin imbalance. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. So then sitting down with the purpose and the passion. So there are actually some things in your profile underneath genius that will actually show us your okay. true special cause in the world. So, again, there's another chronobiology wheel. And that one there will show you what your brain does best, how your mind works best through the day. So have a look at that detailed schedule. When yeah. you're looking through these things, if anything pops up that you're like, oh, my gosh, amazing, or hmm, I don't mesh with this, I don't click with this, or I don't resonate with this thing, those are the things that would benefit coming to me and taking a screenshot and sending to me and asking a question. Okay, cool. Because it will this will then create the conversation around natural versus habitual. So talents that come naturally to you. Um, uh, I might feel pressured to achieve a desired status. As a result, I may persevere until I find work that is meaningful to me. We just spoke about that. Uh -huh. It's getting to that point where you feel like you're going to achieve that serotonin return. That endorphin kick so that will be what we do in our life as we're chasing that return on investment yeah 
Um, you may generally enjoy learning about and occupying your mind with scientific and comprehensive topics. Yeah, I love them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hence why you jumped into PH360 and started researching it straight away. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like research everything, research yep. everything. The and I just, I'm it. fascinated science and, and um, the brain. I've, I've spent a lot of time because there's Huntington, Huntington's disease mm -hmm. and my husband's family and he died and my son died. <clears throat> and I, so I spent nearly, oh, nearly 30 years Probably, no, probably 25 years, uh, totally immersing myself in the brain and how it works and, and that. Well, you may actually find that once you've been on this journey for a while, if you feel the desire to understand more comprehensively a lot of this modality, um, we can talk later on about you actually could become qualified in what I do. Okay. Mm, that's a conversation for later, but yep. I always say to everyone, spend some time and immerse yourself in your own profile and understanding all of that is existing in this. Yeah. And if you feel called to it, you will speak to me. Like, I don't need to ever remind anyone. You will eventually get to a point where you'll go, yeah, I want to know about this. This shows me so much dynamics of different people around me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we're about to launch a corporate wellness company soon too, so there will be some cool wow. avenues for everyone then as well. Um, so going back to yours, so um, you enjoy, you're probably really great at discerning patterns, um, both visually and abstract. Um, you're probably really, really good, or you've said you're already really good at understanding scientific topics. A tendency yeah. to understand, oh, <laughs> okay, this is one that's very, very common for people. Underestimating the completion times, in which case it's important for me to give myself ample time to finish a task and fully engaged to complete it on time. Otherwise, you may suffer in your career. So we're the ones that leave everything to the last minute deadline and then yep. hate the stress of it, but we yep. still achieve it. It's a way Correct. that we avoid our procrastination. We'll procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate. Now it's a dire emergency. Now I'll get it done. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Very true. Common. So the other thing for a, a good tactic for a diplomat is I say to most of my clients is see if you can find an hour in your day towards the end of it that is a whatever hour. Okay. Almost like a meditation hour, but it just gives you that hour where it just creates a vortex that if anything throws onto your plate, you have an hour that you know you can play with and shift some times around. It's like a crisis hour. Yeah. Yep, got it. That's good. Actually, let me write that in your document. Can we call it something other than crisis, though? <laughs> um, I like your vortex, hour. Yeah, um, I, like, I think vortex, I create, create your buffer hour. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And allocate it with your phone sort of a thing. Just make sure you, you're going, you know, it's cool. I've got this. Because ultimately when we can reimagine your body is the London train station. And yeah. each I'll of these, <laughs> yep, cool. So each of these colorful clocks and wheels is a different train in the station. Yep. Ultimately, everyone has to leave the station, go on their journeys and return by specific time frames to keep everything running on time. Mm -hmm. If a train leaves at the wrong time, it will upset everything else in the body and all the other clocks of the body will then be off. Oh. And then creating and running from a state of stress rather yep. than running from a state of flow. So within the PA360 profile, there may be plenty of things in here that you go, you know what, I've been running my life different to that all the time, which means yep. you've naturally been allowing your internal clocks to be functioning just off kilter for quite a long time. And yes. you could imagine that running the train station off kilter for quite some time will eventually cause dis-ease, causing disease. Mm -hmm. I hear mm. you. Okay. So as much as there may be some things in here, it's about trusting the process and going, you know what, I'm going to surrender to this and allow myself to come back into a natural flow. It took me two and a half years yeah. as a coach to leave my life behind and come back into a calmer, balanced state and natural flow. Yeah. So it will take time. And, it, and you've spent however many years you have coping. Yes, we're good copers in our family, and us, the females in our family. And I've come a long way. 
from where I was and I mm-hmm. and I will probably it will probably take me quite a long time to to what did you just say? Uh, um, you left and come back. Yeah, so to um, create flow, basically. Yeah. A lot of time to create flow. And the ultimate thing is, is even though I'm giving you all of this information, in this smaller package, it means that you've got, uh, it's a very, like, just chunk, hope you're doing the best, and we've got to follow up when you when you need it. And then later yeah. on down the track, we can go into one-on-ones if you want to. Um, there is bigger packages and options that I have, an online support group, which helps break this all down into bite-sized chunks. You've got two weeks right. to get through each of those six priorities. Yep and two weeks to integrate and two weeks to understand. And I call it the uni stage because you don't go to uni and start week one and become a professional perfectionist. You have to spend your entire time at uni learning yes. and you leave uni and you then go into a space of practice and then you spend a couple of years practicing and then you become qualified. So understanding yes. you are the age you are and you have plenty of time, but no one expects you to get this perfect this month or potentially even this year. Yeah. yeah. It'll be about being aware mm. Mm. and creating mm. strategies to assist you in changing your trajectory. Um, and what I, what I do call is, do you know, have you ever heard of the Kaizen process? No. Kaizen is a China, ancient Chinese proverb and give me the opportunity. Look up the Kaizen. Okay. So the Kaizen process speaks, it's an ancient um, Chinese proverb and it, it speaks about the war times and in the, the simpler form um, is that um, back in the war times, they had to, they realized that you could get a task done. You, you can't get a task done if you're trying to do everything at once. And the only way for us to create constant, constant, consistent, gradual growth and flow forwards is by understanding that all we have control over is this 30 seconds. Yep. After this 30 seconds, there's another one. After that one, there's another one. After that one, there's another one. And so whatever you choose for that 30 seconds is only a concern for 30 seconds. Because after that decision, you have another 30 seconds to make a different decision. And all we're trying to do, um, I'll get you actually the the proper, am I in the right group? I am here. This is my my global support group here. And I've created units and I think it's in week two. How long have you been doing this for, uh, Shana, the DNA oh, stuff? Nearly four years now. Wow. I got interested in, in DNA <clears throat> from the Huntingtons and looking up, and I know that's only one aspect, and mm-hmm. looking up and, re- you know, reading up on um, DNA and I, and I learned, and it started fascinating me, actually. Mm, you'd love this. Absolutely love it. So the um the 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 meaning of kaizen so the uh, the first word kai means change and zen means good so we're looking for good changes basically um and we understand that the chinese would use the word to ins- express the improvement process so um it's really talking about the small steps right. towards the good change yes so continuous small changes will create the largest change for the better. Yes. So baby steps, basically. Yes, I, be- I do very much believe that. And I'm a big leaper, uh, and that's what gets me into trouble. Yes. I- I'm fast, and I'll take the big leap rather than slow down and, like, let's really – take the little steps and let's really integrate this before we do the next thing. I'm mm. always like a, like on one of those um, <laughs> pogo sticks. You probably don't remember yes, them, but pogo I sticks, do. you know, where I'm just bouncing to the next thing and the next yep. thing. And then, you know, years will pass and you'll go, all right, I've done all these things, but <laughs> actually <laughs> yep. the one thing that I really wanted to achieve, which was, um, income for myself 
as a yes. what you know, I'm, which I, I'm I so totally I'm so intelligent and so creative. I, I totally know that I can make uh, uh, a good income business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's the very thing capable. that I've, uh, that has um, distracted me. You know, I've distracted myself all the time. So, I mean, that's where, why coming in and having a look at this. So I'd love for you to come through your genius section and have a look at the statements there and yeah, realise some well, of the points in which they probably um, stand out as to where your genius is. So you've got a good, strong, adaptive memory. Um, yeah. You generally enjoy systems, graphics, synthesising many elements to create something. Yeah. Um, you might not be a good fit, fit for direct sales and then no. you might go to avoid persuading or um, other people to purchase things. If... <laughs> If you feel that this is the thing, so if you're a diplomat and you feel connected to the purpose and the drive, you may not sit there and do cold sales. It's more about you're so passionate and so connected to the vision and the drive that you can't help but sell to people and share it with people. But you'll generally come from a space of passion and sharing. And That's what I'd like to be. Together. That's what I'd like to get to. Mm. But do you, are you against sales these days or you're into it? I'm totally open to sales, but I, I can't I, or I don't like that hard sell. Mm. But mm. I've been watching people like Emma and Ryan and, and lots of other people over the last couple of years selling from their passion. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'll just have that. Oh, you know, you'll be sitting there and I'll go, oh, yeah, no, I'm going to buy that. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's their pure, you know. Well, I've so researched and put a lot of time into researching as well. Yep. But that's why that's how I want to sell, coming from a place of, oh my God, she's amazing, as in not for ego, but I really want to do what she's got, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah. So it's really but to do that I have to be room. passionate about what I'm selling. Yes. Yeah. Or the mission, the vision. The mission no. and the vision, yeah. yeah. And and that's what I'm going to be working on with Ryan because I just haven't had one since mm. my son died. But it's three years ago since my son died. Yeah. And losing a child, it's just it shut down a lot in me that is only beginning to open up. Yeah, right. Well, this is the cracking of the egg and it's very, very common. So for diplomats getting into genius space, a really important thing is going – like, and it used to drive my ex crazy was that I needed to create, my head would be a vortex. And the only way I could yeah. make sense was to speak with other people. So my thing would be is to help you find a friend who's analytical and logical, get a glass of wine each and sit yeah. down with your brain, your thoughts, your passions and your emotions and allow someone, cause you're very vortex like, like I am. Yes. So find someone who is linear and logical and get them to help you mind map. Create yeah. a bigger vision because I've had to do that most of my life is I have certain people that I know are able to become certain thinkers so they can help me be outside of what I get stuck in. Yeah. And all diplomats uh, Russell's are Russell's very good like that with me. And do you allow him to be that though? I've learned to allow him <laughs> to be like that and I've, got, I've still got a wee way to go with that. Yeah. So that would be my thing is as much as the thing is because you both work from home, I feel like you need a soundboard outside of the home. Correct. That's why I've gone in with Ryan. Good. Good. Perfect. So Ryan will love, you'll be able to use some of this stuff with Ryan is, is go through and create your own avatar of who you are. Have a look over here at your social profile. You know, what are the parts of my social profile that I connect with? So people around me may be surprised at how suddenly I may change my life, my profession and involvement in projects. Keeping these things to yourself sometimes until they, they become something can quite often stop others from their judgment if that bothers you. Um, but just know that you're someone who chops and changes because you're very passion driven. Yeah. Um, I might prefer to give others their space and not like it to impose anything on them. Similarly, I may need to take my time in the morning as I also need a quiet space where I can reflect. People who disturb my time may irritate me and cause me great stress. Yeah. So. I, and that's, <clears throat> that's something that I am going to change 
that this has made me conscious of because I, I forced myself to get up and get going, mm, you know, yeah. and get on the computer and try and make something happen or, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't allow myself that space in the morning. Mm. And I also saw from your food list, um, <laughs> your mornings, Shocker. which is good. No, it's fine. It's fine. It gives me an understanding where your emotions are and where your yeah. reactivity is. So your breakfast being full of grains and things like that, like the muesli and the yogurt and stuff like that, those things can be very irritant. And check off each individual ingredient with your food list. Right. Okay, we'll go across to food. Um, but again, before I go across to food, I want to remind you here in this process here, in this paperwork, remembering place comes first, then your genius, then moving your body. Ah. We haven't even talked about food yet. Yeah, the, yeah like the, the priority thing's really intriguing, isn't it? Yeah, so step away. Everyone goes, but what do I need to eat? If you're a diplomat, I say don't even think about your eating because your eating is an emotional response to your environment and whether or not you're doing work that is passionate. Forget yeah. the food. Make sure your environment is nurturing. Make sure you're doing stuff that is purposeful and make sure you're moving your darn body. Yeah. Then the food will sort itself out because you now have a really great guidance tool yeah understand okay. yes so in your food profile you have your food clock your eating times are looking pretty good for that and what it says here where it says drink what it's saying is if you're hungry in that time you're more than likely actually thirsty and needing yeah. hydration and in the morning your body is needing its hormone regulations and its fluid regulations to happen so those processes need to be supported by helping the body to flush so drinking until eight at least teas water whatever it might be trying to keep your caffeine intake until later in the morning oh, okay yep anywhere from 10 to 11 onwards because, yep. again, that caffeine stimulant is going to cause a stress response in the body first thing in the morning. And we want ourselves to be cool, calm, and collected. Yeah, I, uh, I can do that. Excellent. I would love for you to really monitor how you're feeling with that change because, generally, it might be a push initially to um, eat, have your caffeine a bit later, but what you'll find is you'll be less reactive, less... Um, you'll reach less for reactive foods and emotional foods because... When we have caffeine, it sends us up. And what comes yep. up must come down. Yep. Yep. So really creating that awareness. Is cacao, is, would that be all right to drink instead of the coffee? I too have cacao in the morning because I like the stimulation from it, but it's not the aggressive stimulation of caffeine. It's more of a subdued um, flow. Yeah. So, so would that be worth a swap? Yeah. Yep. I definitely would do that. Okay. But also you can have a look in your food list and check off what teas, what coffees. Is coffee actually even a thing at the moment? Is cacao a thing? Let's have a look. Cacao. Cacao. Oops. So at the moment, cacao nibs, excellent. Cacao powder is great. So that's every day if you want to um, and four to five times a week for cacao. Then if we have a look at, what would you say before? I've got Coffee. some like really good stuff from Bali. Perfect. I've got the Bali stuff normally the too. So solid block stuff. Yes. Is that from Kate um, O'Brien? Yes. Yeah, I love her stuff. I'm going to Bali yeah. in a couple of weeks and I'm hoping to steal a heap and not have to pay for shipping. <laughs> well, I, I reckon like I've tried the powder from... Uh, it's supposed to be ceremonial grade powder, but I tell you what, her stuff is so much better. Way more powerful. So you can have, just getting on to coffee, coffee for you at the moment is uh, two to three times a week. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so this will show us what's happening in our adrenal Not system, Not two right? to three times a day. No. No. <laughs> this shift will have the biggest shift for you because it will take away your anxiety and your reactivity. Ah, so, so instead of having that, you can be having, have a look here, your top out of oil, everything, tea. oolong, jasmine, green tea, chai tea. I like green tea. 
Perfect. So those are better things to be having. Aloe vera juice. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. For your oh, body right okay, now. I'll study these charts. Yes. Um, now having a look at everything. So I just want to have a look at your general spectrum. So out of all the foods in the world, these are the top things for you right now. And I can look at your list and see that your body is sitting very inflamed and yeah. time and leak. So is. Each of these ingredients, you can click on it. It'll say, why is this food good for me? This is recommended for you because it helps with um, improving blood flow in the veins. Um, That's so incredible. With, yes. Yeah. This is, this is next level for any health and wellness professional. Um, it helps with anti-inflammatory. It's an antifungal. It helps calming the body and the mood regulations. Helps with overactive mind and sleep disturbances. So making a time... Um, steeped tea at night time would be really beneficial. Having time on your dinner every night would be really beneficial. Wow. Um, but I can also, I know that um, leek and celery are great for any inflammatory, any fungal and fluid retention. Spinach is really, really high for magnesium, phosphorus, zinc and potassium. Capers are really, really high as an antifungal and antihistaminic. Garlic the same. For the moment, it's if I look at someone's food list, I can generally tell in Chinese herbal medicine terms what, what your body's doing just by looking at this food list. And yeah, it will I, change. I'm, I, I'm totally inflamed at the moment because I know that from the pain in my joints. Mm, okay, you're not going to like this. Um, <laughs> how much meat are you eating at the moment? Uh, probably three times a week. Okay, you may be okay with doing this then. Chicken this, and then chicken. Yeah. So it's saying chicken once a week. It's saying veal once oh. a week. It's saying turkey once a week. But for you right now, broths are good to two to three times a week. So it's actually asking if you could try and lean more vegetarian for a couple of weeks and give your body an opportunity to oh, okay. yeah. to relax. Because at the moment, your body's not digesting proteins, hence why we've got so much inflammation. The good news is, do you like seafood? Yeah, I love seafood. Great. So salmon at the moment is on... I don't like salmon. Oh, bugger. I love salmon. I Maybe like make it. a curry with it. Hey? That way you won't, maybe make a curry with the salmon. That way you won't notice it so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chop it into that. You won't notice it so much. Or maybe make some cool, like, um, salmon fish cakes. I don't like any of those ones that are listed. Oh, interesting. Oh, I These like the... white fish. I like white fish. We have different white fish than that, but I like white fish. Yep. Yeah. So cod and things like that. Sardines are good. Oysters are good. Anchovies are good. I can eat canned salmon. Yep, that's good. Perfect. I can eat canned salmon. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I just, I can't do. And we get the most beautiful salmon. And Mm. yeah. Mm, Interesting. So the moment it's saying if you could be more pescatarian, your body will benefit greatly from it. More what? Pescatarian. What's pescatarian? So not vegetarian, not vegan, but as pescatarian means more of the seafood and vegetables. Ah. And at the moment, broths, apparently. Yeah. Okay. So with that, I've given you a bunch to look at. It's really just about going through. So in here, this will show you the best ways to prepare the foods that your body is going to recognize the most. Ooh, juices are really high for you at the moment. Your means you're lacking um, some phytonutrients. Yeah. So it's a juicer. Good. Some juicing would do you well. Freeze the pulp and use it for baking things, for curries, for stews, for goulashes. I always do that. Right. In here, you've got a repertoire of recipes that you can start playing with. And with those recipes, we have a meal planner that you can create your week's month's worth of food. Oh, wow. And try some wonderful new recipes. So they'll auto-populate lunch and dinner for you. Um, I will generally go through and change out dinner for a vegetarian option and just have most of my meat dishes at lunch and yep. breakfast. I just have a couple of options. Generally I just do a vegetable and fruit smoothie if I'm having a breakfast. Um, which if you are in my six week self evolution, no, not this one, the other one, uh, let me send you the intrusion meditation. I'm going to gift you that. I've sent oh, that to the chat you. with Emma. Um, and 
That's what I want. I want my other camera. Okay, 360 here. There's a video I did about smoothies. And it's a very, very important one for diplomats. There's some lots of tips and tricks in there that will benefit you greatly. Um, That's awesome. Computer's not going to give me the one I want. Oh, there he is. That one. There's you. <laughs> oh, do I have you in here? Yes, I do. I'll add you to that video. That one talks a lot about smoothies and how to make a really good, healthy, balanced smoothie. Oh, excellent. Because I've got all the toys as well. <laughs> I'll, have to dust, I'll have to dust them off. But I've got a juicer because I, I went through a stage of, um, of juicing, you know, green. Um, yep, yep. And um, I, I love all that. Yep. And I've got a um, smoothie maker as well. Which will, um, and you'll see in that video that smoothies, what I mean, is completely different to what commercial different. smoothies are. Yeah. All right, my dearly. So, is there any questions you have from me? No, not at the moment because I've just like that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I love, I love it. And it's so much better than anything else I've ever tried because it makes actual scientific sense to me. I used to be a Weight Watchers coach for a, a year oh. until I um, thought, well, this is a load of bollocks and all I, all I can see is people going around in circles con constantly. Mm -hmm. And this is the difference, right? Even as a personal trainer, I was like, but why aren't they getting the results? They're doing the thing or they're not doing that. Maybe they're lying to me. They're not doing the thing. And then I realized that some bodies just shouldn't be training in the morning and some bodies should only have two meals a day. Yeah, some and they're trying bodies to fit need into, to have five meals per day. They, you know, they're trying to all fit into one hole. Mm, mm. I always say to everyone, if it comes in a template and it's been recommended to someone else, it's bollocks and it doesn't belong to you. Yeah, and the actual corporation... Their program's pretty good, like their food and that's pretty good, but yep. uh, it's like a rat on a wheel program. I call it a rat on a wheel. Yep, 100%, you're right. And to work for, they're abominable, absolutely abominable, and they've got Oprah Winfrey as one of their shareholders now. It makes me so sad that Oprah would back something like that, but she doesn't know much about this just yet. No. And We're working like, on it. The, you're paid minimum wage and... Um, you were, it was like you were controlled by Hitler or someone. It was the minute you stepped out of anything, mm. it was like, no, you can't do that. Well, keto is much the same. They, I've seen like people in their keto groups. Woman, like to treat woman employees though, it's, it's shocking oh. how they treated their employees. Yeah, no, you don't want that. So I, I, I walked because like I oh. won't do any of that shit anymore. Good, so good. It's um, it's interesting watching people in those sorts of groups. Like I've I've got a few friends that still do keto, even though, anyway, um, <laughs> and I've watched people in their keto groups ridicule someone for eating carrot. Yeah, yeah. And I go, you guys are fools. Like that's not balanced or healthy. The keto isn't. No. No. So bad. I know. Um. Friend of mine in Australia has just gone on to. She said, "No, I'm going on." I said, "I'm going to try out this pH 360 because it's um, really resonates with me. The science of it, yeah, the DNA science of it." And uh, she said, "Oh no, I'm on Deborah Murta's. I'm just starting Deborah Murta's um, keto program." But <sighs> everyone I've known, every woman I've known that's gone on keto. Gets right into it, loses a lot of weight fast, and then you'll check in with them six months' time, like you'll see a photo of them on Facebook, and they're right back to where uh, they were again. Yeah. Another yo-yo. Because yo -yo. they can't keep it up. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable at all. So to me, I'm very keen to go with the... Um, yeah. The long and slow. <laughs> That's it. We're in it for the long game. No one's here to win tomorrow. We're here to keep ourselves alive for longer, living a far greater existence long term. Yes, that's what I'm about. I've got grandchildren mm. now. 
A lot exactly. of my motivation is around, um, you know, showing uh, my grandchildren what life can be like. It doesn't have to be the stressful, push-push life that they get taught. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. And this is gift. Like this here with what we create within the PH360 world is we're about creating individuality, empowerment, and speaking your truth from a space of fully connected to yourself. You can go and do all the emotional, all the sensual, all the tantra, all the everything. But yeah. if you're coming back and you don't know how to set up your environment specific to your DNA and your individual requirements and understanding the interactions you have with other people based on their DNA, Wow. You know, there's just so many people out there that are just missing that that little aspect of understanding your personalized profile, your personalized health. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. This is huge. Yay! I'm actually creating at the moment speed this dating. Is huge. It's my Sorry? side project. My side project is I'm creating speed dating events soon. Ah, cool. Mm, mm. And so. <laughs> I've got my online corporate, sorry, I've got my corporate program we're creating. I've got an online, which I showed you before, I've got an online support group and then I also am creating a speed dating um, society. Awesome. Mm. How for you? Which is very similar. So you'll see how it all, you can understand through the conversations we've had is when you understand the phenotype of the other person, you can understand what motivates and drives them and we can take away this whole, he's lazy, she's a B-I-T-C-H or whatever it might be and we have to start yeah. understanding really the great genius that every human is and then we can start to nurture and nourish and respect each other for that yeah i'm totally on board with that yes all right beautiful i'm going to call it quits for us today yes and we thank will you set very up your much follow up. I, I recommend a month to two months we'll do a follow-up and we'll remeasure you and we'll go through and check in where the peaks the plateaus the things like that are um yep. but you've got me through messenger yep so so we'll hook up You'll just, how will we know? When you're ready. When you feel like you want to do your next session, you let oh, me know. Oh, I see. Know. Okay. In about yep. a month's time, do you think? Yep. About a month. Okay. Yep. Yep. Perfect. All right. Lovely. Thank you, Shana. That was awesome. My absolute pleasure. I'm excited. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Enjoy and remember baby steps, small yes. steps. Yes. Yes. All right. Enjoy the process. Thank you. Bye. No worries. Bye. Cool.